early morning in Fez, the tree-lined avenue, the joggers, the taxi buzzing up and down, up and down. The sun as it breaks the horizon pierces the mist coming off the Atlas Mountain. The cleaners cleaning up the park after a lovely night of fun and festivities for families. First coming to fairs. So a lot of military of the um, distance, we can see some parts of the wall. The cities, the they big cities. surround the vast area in Fez City, which is all the grounds of a royal palace. The largest royal palace in Morocco amongst the 25 official royal palaces. But the oldest too, because it uh, doesn't date back to this dynasty. I mean, to the last 400 plus years. It goes back to 14th century. So wow, 1400s when it had been built by a way back dynasty that was Berber dynasty called the Marinid. The Marinid dynasty was very important in the history of Morocco and Fez above all because Fez was their capital. They were the ones who had built up the palace with all the grounds coming up on the left side with the walls from 14th century. <coughs> Look at the walls, they are original. They have just been restored and repaved thanks to aid from UNESCO in the recent years. And they cover like a town in the city. <coughs> there ahead of us we can see the main entrance to the palace. And John and I really meant to start out at this time for the reason that there are no crowds yet at the gates of the palace. You should see what it is like in an hour, in only half an hour from now what it is going to be like with two groups landing there to take photos. Those are the, that's the main entrance to the royal palace, but it is all a remake from the early 60s. There used to be a much older 14th century gate that, I mean, was, was falling apart and it was all restored and remade by late King Hassan II in the early 60s. What is to our right side being restored is the Mela. Remember this word, Mela? So we just made it here before our four buses turned up. So we got our photos. This is the gates of the Royal Palace, the oldest Royal Palace in Morocco from the 1400s. Simply fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'm just looking at the artistry on this bronze, huge bronze door. They did Morning business coffee. together and so on. This is Fez El Jadid to the left side. Fez the new, and this is still the Mela, the old Sephardic Jewish neighborhood where there are still. Here is one of them I know to the right. A man coming out, he's a jeweler. Moroccan Sephardic Jew who did not want to leave with his family after 1948 to Israel. He said, this is my country, this is where my ancestors are, and I'm staying here. Some of them had the same idea and stayed here, and they're still owning properties, owning mostly jewelry shops in this neighborhood deep inside. So we are leaving now Fez el Jadid, what we can call the Newa Medina. Newa because it was from late 14th, 15th and late 15th century. Yet the Medina, the real Medina where Heritu starts out, where we are going to start the walking tour is 17th, 16th century and I'm going to take you mostly downhill. Our walking tour I have planned it out in my head to make it mostly down here. It will go, as you will see, we'll go through 14th, 13th, 12th, 11th, 10th, 
until we reach the bottom, which is like a base, like a bowl in the bottom of the Medina, is at least early 800s. But yet remember, it was in that area where the French archaeologists had... We're about to go into the wall of Medina. This is the oldest wall Medina in Africa. In the world, in fact. Older than the one in Egypt, which is classified as the oldest. This one is even older. And here we go. We start 15th, 16th century, and as we work our way down into it, we get down to 900. Mm -hmm. Hold on. As we walk into the Medina, are you serious? I'm being abused by Canadians. <laughs> and one, one Canadian in particular. <laughs> that one. Hello. Just if she ever comes to Australia. <laughs> okay. Well, hang on. We're making a love story here. And what you are going to see next is what I call a four change of what is coming up later on deeper inside the middle. This is a street that will lead us to the artisan's place. And this is one of the old street mines of Peripher here. And this is what the most street inside the Medina. Here we go. And the old house is here too. The old house is charming. So when I see a sign, what it means, and I'm not asking you to rescind the star. Dar, D-A-R in Moroccan Arabic is a house. Send this house. Whenever you see a sign like this by an old house, it means it is... On the left, dog feet are going to start really Anyway, feet up. Eyes down, eyes up. March. You can almost make a song out of that. Eyes down, eyes up, eyes down, eyes up. First. But if you take a picture uh, close up, then leave some space after you have taken a picture, leave some space for someone else to get closer to take a picture if you want. So this is the work, this is a demonstration. This is a family's place that's well work. It's a family and business. It has been passed down throughout generations. To English, Mustafa is here. Leave your, your whispers on. I'm going to be off. He's going to talk to you directly. Just to give you an idea about what they use as materials in the work and everything. Here is Mustafa. So he does that all by hand from memory. No, no map, no plans, all from memory. He's a master artisan. And look at this beautiful doors from the view. It's also done by hand and it's ordered for some family and we will ship it. So this is straight before, please, it was plain with no designs mm -hmm. and he started these designs from the middle of the tray and he ended it by the way all around, all around to the, what we call Sir of Life. The second work when he finished the designs, he used wood hammer to make the chip, no machine, all hand made. Mm -hmm. So when it's finished, After two months, it comes like this one. Oh my goodness! Two months. Two months. So, my ladies and gentlemen, as you know, in our home we use them like coffee tables, and we handle them like picture also. These are all antiquities in this artisan store. What a facade! Don't know prices. But they are all antiquities. How old? I don't know. But everything has a price. Wow. Look at that. Very nice things. Yeah. Very nice. And for the big things, we do shipping. If it's okay. some things you like. Thank you.
As is with most tours, uh, they take you to leather shops, jewellery shops, um, as part of the tour. And then the, they give you a demonstration and then there's a sell. Oh, you don't have to buy, but personally I think we just spend too much time in them after the demonstration. People that buy, they don't. And the demonstration took five minutes. We've been here 25 close to half an hour and most of us are just standing around waiting to go um, that is, and it's all tours it's not just one company all the tours do it um, we're going to go to a, a leather shop today as well um, yeah so anyway it is what it is so that's the main gate to the old Medina the blue gate Bab gate Babujalud. The transportation inside the Medina used to be only bunches of mules, overloaded. Here we go, into the Medina. Here we go. We have just seen the blue side of the gates of the moon, the Medina. But now, it's got here and turn back. You are going to see it is wow. green. Ah, Outside green. is blue. Inside is green. Outside blue, With inside green. With a significant. These Six for two hundred twenty dollars for six. Six for two hundred twenty dollars. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a Medusa. Islamic Moorish history from the Middle East over to Spain, Portugal. One of my So this is a madrasa or school, equivalent to what we would say is our university, and they lived here. And it's from the 13th century. It's one of the oldest madrasas in history. So, it's for boy, men only, obviously. And those rooms up there. Two boys to a room. And this was like a university. Just a bit more on this. This was a specialist university. So, they were hand-picked, the boys that came here. And they were taught by scientists. And um, philosophers and the objective was to then they would work for the king they'd be the they would be people who um, would run the government for the king so he would have the creme de la creme working for him in his government in his kingdom this, there is a minaret for prayer and it's still used on a Friday only it is open to the public for prayer for the 12 1230 prayer in the prior over there it's the only Medusa in the Islamic world that has a minaret 
as the souk starts to spring to life, shops opening, businesses, men getting their wares out, the women heading up to, to work, the young the tourists starting to flock in here now. As we go deeper and deeper into the Medina. Deeper and deeper and deeper into the Medina. The little off streets. We go down, down, down. And there is the donkey. That's how they move the product up and down and around through this Medina. Motorbikes, cars not allowed. They moved up here with, through the Medina by donkey. It's so deep into the Medina now, it'd be almost impossible for me to find my way out. We've twisted and turned. We've come down alleyways like that. And we're still going deeper and deep. It's downhill and it's steep. We've just twisted and turned. Luckily we have a guy. There's just no way I could find my way out of here. And there's just little doorways, little alleyways, everywhere. Yeah. Natural flow and spring of fire in the Medina. The twists, the turns, the alleyways. It's a haven for cats. Cats are revered here. They looked after, they fed, but they live on the street. And an old Berber lady, she sits there waving to passerby as the old shopkeepers. She unpacks the shelves hoping that a tourist like us, as well as locals, will buy some of her wares. She's been doing this for eons. The price, who knows? Most of the stuff is cheap Chinese, but she continues every day to unpack, prepare her wares. With Kathy. Hello. We're so deep into the Medina now there was just no way we could find our way out. And we're still going down, down, down even further. We're lucky to have a guide. <laughs> Very lucky. We have to find our way out of here. I think we have found the bottom. Is that where we started? No. No. <laughs> I think we found the bottom. <laughs> right up the right up the top. Maybe not quite the bottom. But here we are. Here we are. 1300s, this is built. 1400s, and even earlier as we get deeper in. The transport of the Medina. The donkey carriage. These are the four-legged chevies of the Medina. The Guys, there's not one to be photographed, but take a look quickly inside and you'll run away. Somebody take it and then send it to us. Yeah. The uh, bakery, yeah. the public bakery, entered the oldest part of the suit sure. from the 700. Late 700, 780, 800. We're down there on the bottom. How do we get out? How do we get out? Poop on the streets. The donkey poop is all part of part of the package. We are taking this elemental package to our West Medina. Left turn. I'm glad my chip is still getting some signal, slight signal from satellite. I thought we were at the bottom, but not. we're still going down, down. Today, half, you will end up really with, with great deals. I experienced that. I purchased a few coats here. They were for like 300, 400 euros. In Europe, I saw the same ones for six, 700 euros. Same ones.
This is the way you... Here we are, one of the tanneries, one of the many tanneries for these camel urine, pigeon shit, to strip the flesh off the leather. That's what he's doing down there, stripping the, the flesh off. Oh, my daughter stopped yeah. the church job and having a picture. After all, I expect you everything. He's taking the hair off, huh? Some of the best leather in the world is done here. Here we are. At the tannery. Yeah, the smell is unbelievable. Excuse me. From People, they can claim more steps. They have such wonderful view. Look, okay. oh, if you only cannot, you can sit here because I'm going to explain to you. Look. Yeah. Oh, the, I'm oh, fine, I'm fine. Garbage. We have the tannery next to the tannery. <laughs> we have the rubbish dump. <laughs> Viewing platforms for tourists. <laughs> Not so much. Little tanneries, big tannery. This is a big tannery. Huge tannery. Let's just put this in perspective here. This is from the late 700s to the 800s. That's how old this tannery is. And still today, tanning the same way as they did, using pigeon poop and camel urine for some of the best leather in the world. Continue through this She's maze. She's a model on the bus for us. Yeah. Sure. Spiders work. And Cassie's got to model the shoes. Oh. And alleyways, <laughs> lanes. My wedding slippers. Passages. Your wedding, exactly. My wedding nice. slippers. From the late 700s, early 800s. This single Tower. fight is true wow. here. Come with me, single Cable fight everywhere. downstairs. How do we exit? How do we get out of here? Where do we find our way out? Our Moroccan leader leads us on. And they mate. <laughs> and just like that, we're out. Just like that. Wow. What an experience. Rejuvenation. Renewal. Watch that piece of metal. <laughs> In the Medina, you can buy souvenirs, novelties, and party drinks. 